Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax and welcome to those of you who are wishing with us online this morning. We begin by acknowledging that we are in a Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship which Mi'kmaq and uh, Maliseet people first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. Just uh, last uh, week or week before, last, uh, Halifax was host to the North American Indigenous Games, and the number I heard was there were something like 5,000 athletes who came from all over North America here to Mi'kmaq, here to Nova Scotia, here to Halifax uh, to compete with one another. And uh, it was a very successful gathering, despite, uh, despite the fact that, uh, that the deluge <laughs> occurred during their presence here. Also yesterday, uh, Dr. Cuthbertson uh, so memorial service was held in, in this parish. And Dr. Cuthbertson, uh, as many of you know, is a scholar, historian, and uh, archivist. And I'm not sure how many of you are aware of this, but uh, his archival work and his history uh, have been crucial in finding reconciliation uh, between Mi'kmaq and Maliseet in the province of New Brunswick. Uh, he uh, contributed greatly to, to that. Uh, stage of reconciliation. We give thanks for that. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 328. find the service in the bulletin that I hope you have and also you will find in the long sheet the collect for today and various other special prayers and readings for this day. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, and let us pray together the collect for today, found in your insert. God of eternal wisdom, you alone impart the gift of discernment, so that we may choose wisely between the treasures of your promised reign this world's countenance, through Jesus Christ, pearl of true battle. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with, all si with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. We will now read responsively sections from Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding, the unfolding of, your of your words, words gives light. light. It, it imparts understanding to the simple. To simple. With open mouth I pant, because I long for your commandments. 
turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your custom toward those who love your name. Keep my steps steady according to your promise, and never let inequity have dominion over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes, My eyes shed, shed streams, streams of, tears of tears because, because your, law your law is not, is not kept. kept. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure and what is new and what is old. The Gospel of Christ. Speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I should have said at the time of uh, our welcomings that uh, uh, Dean uh, Smith uh, is uh, on uh, on a holiday, a well-earned holiday. 
Someone was telling me last time I was here that he really hasn't had any time off since before COVID. So uh, we hope that he's, uh, he's resting and recuperating and rejuvenating and all those things. Although he seemed to have lots of energy the last time I spoke to him quite recently. <laughs> we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And who will separate us from the love of Christ? Well, these words of St. Paul addressed to the Christians in Rome, a generation after Christ, these words are familiar to all of us who have ever attended the funeral of a friend or of a member of our families. They are so often read at the funeral service. They are, of course, an assurance of the overwhelming desire of God in Christ to hold us in his embrace, in death as in life. They are words of inclusion, not exclusion. They are words of belonging. They are words of blessing, of our incorporation into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. In this morning's gospel, Jesus uses no less than six similes with which to tell us what the kingdom of heaven is like. It is like, Jesus says, a mustard seed. It is like yeast. It is like treasure hidden in a field. It is like a pearl of great price. It is like, this one bemuses me a little bit, it's like, oh, despite the fact that I'm a fisherman and I like to have a fish in the net, it's like, Jesus said, a net catching fish of every kind. And then he goes on to say, they'll need some sorting, of course. I wonder if there were DFO officers on the shores of the Sea of Galilee and that was what was going on. And finally, it is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, new and old. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus tells us, is of great value and limitless in its dimensions. It is, as Jesus says elsewhere, and as Frederick Buchner expresses so well in today's bulletin, it is here among us, ever present, our deepest need and our greatest blessing. As Buchner wrote, it is crying out to be born within ourselves and within the world. It is above all inclusive, if only, as the collect reminded, of this, reminded us this morning, if only we will choose, like the birds, to live within the boughs of the mustard tree and indeed to nestle there. If only we will be yeast to a loveless world. If only we will sell all that we have in order to buy into the kingdom. If only we will allow ourselves to be caught and to be found worthy and to be put into the keep basket. These are all ways of saying yes to God's kingdom, to being embraced within it. Yet there is a sixth way given in today's gospel. Jesus said, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. That's a little different from the other similes, isn't it? I wonder what Jesus meant by it. Well, not being a terribly modest fellow, I have to tell you that I am a scribe. That is to say, I am someone who has been called to be a teller of God's good news and an interpreter of it, an interpreter of holy things, a scribe. And so I think that he is suggesting that we can find inclusion through the treasures held by the scribes. That is to say, in our case, held by the church. Over the past 50 plus years of ministry in the Anglican Communion, I've been struck again and again by the richness, the richness of our treasures, Christ's treasures held by the church. They are treasures that are also pathways into the kingdom of heaven, into inclusion, into God's family. Pathways leading us to belonging. 
Well, what are they? Perhaps I can recite them for you. They are to be found in our liturgies, such as today's. They are to be found in scripture, such as today's. They are to be found in a knowledge and love of our history and our traditions, such as surround us in this cathedral today. They are to be found in our experiences of giving and receiving mutual pastoral care. They are to be found in our constant need to repent for our failures. They are to be found in God's forgiveness and the grace so freely given to carry on, to carry on in such a way as to live as if the kingdom of heaven is here and now in us and around us, illuminating our lives and those of others. In retirement, I've been uh, exchanging letters and uh, various uh, writings uh, with a friend of mine, a friend of over 60 years. We first met as, uh, as freshmen in, in college and uh, we joined the same fraternity and we were roommates for a while. Uh, he was an Episcopalian from Manhattan and he uh, was uh, committed to studying theology and uh, to ordination, and as he, he says sometimes in his letters, becoming the Bishop of New York. See, none of us are modest uh, from my college. Uh, so he and I have uh, been exchanging letters and one thing or another, as I said, and most recently he sent me quite a, a hundred, hundred pages of, uh, of uh, memoir, uh, and much of it is fascinating and resonates with me uh, a great deal. But at one point, because part of his current burden is, as he puts it, to get rid of his Christian clothing. He's trying to, he's trying to give up his Christianity. He's, it's, it's gone beyond him or he's gone beyond it. Or it's time for separation. And we all need time out every now and again. I make no judgment on that score. But in uh, justifying this, uh, he picks up on the, and he lives in the American South, we'll give him that. Uh, he picks up on this idea of blessing. And he has a very negative reaction to blessing. The way in which uh, people, especially some more evangelical perhaps, uh, more pious Christians use that, that term. He finds it condescending, judgmental, sentimental. He finds it to be egregious, cheap, but above all to be a way of exclusion rather than inclusion. Well, I'm going to write to him and tell him this. You don't have to call him yourself. Uh, he's wrong about this. <laughs> he's wrong because he misunderstands the meaning of blessing. And as a clergyman, I struggled with this for many, many, many years. People would come up to me and say, well, oh, Father, will you bless this? And it was a trinket of some kind. And I, being sort of a highfalutin sort of person, didn't quite, quite understand that. But of course, I did, did, did it. But until uh, after a number of years, it dawned on me that to bless something, to bless something or to bless a person is to incorporate that thing, that person into the story. To bless something or someone is to allow them to enter into the story of God, is to connect their story with the story of God. It is to connect their story with our story, the church's story. Think of how the bread and the wine are blessed in Eucharist this morning. It's not a magical act. A story is told over the bread and the wine. And they and we are transformed in the telling of the story. So how then can we know ourselves to be part of God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven? We can allow ourselves to find and be found by God in his story and our story. We can allow ourselves to see and to know and to feel ourselves to be wholly a part of this sacred mystery we call Thanksgiving, Eucharist, and other liturgies of the church. We can, of course, read, mark, and this great phrase, we can, of course, read, mark, and inwardly digest. Don't you love that? Holy Scripture, finding our stories in its stories, which are, after all, stories of our spiritual ancestors, indeed, arguments of our spiritual ancestors. We can know ourselves to be the newest children in a family begun 2,000 years ago in an upper room 
where disciples were transformed into apostles by the Holy Spirit. They were made into a community, a community living and practicing what it means to be part of the kingdom of God, supporting one another and constantly learning and relearning as the church has for 2,000 years what it means to live as part of the kingdom of heaven. And we can love and serve one another in selfless compassion for the sake of the world. The neighbors of those Christians in Rome who received Paul's letter, they saw how the Christians of Rome lived. And other people throughout the Roman Empire saw how the Christians in their little churches lived. And they said, see how these Christians love one another. And because of that, in time, a whole Roman Empire became part of Christ's kingdom. So no wonder that Paul was convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are blessed. We belong in the, in the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. stand and join with me as we confess the faith of our baptism, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today, we pray for Linda, our primate, Sandra, our bishop, our wardens, Mayanne and Zachary, and Jackie, our interim warden, for Paul, our rector and dean, Helen, our retired priest, our deacons, Ray and Maggie, and retired deacon Heather, Jillian, our engagement leader, Paul, uh, Nick, Russ, and Pauline, and all who make music in this place, and all who minister here in so many ways both lay and ordained. We also pray for those who are ill or in special need, especially Stephanie, Cassandra, David, Susan and Larry, Holly, Mary, Leslie, Andrew, Catherine, Jackie, Lucy, Rano, Leanne, Heather, Leslie, Christopher, Richard, and Gary. And we remember those who have died, especially Brian and Archbishop Michael Piers. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, 
hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways, for the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Offertory hymn is hymn 60.
Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to thank you and praise you, holy and gracious God, creator of all things, ruler of heaven and earth, sustainer of life, for you are the source of all goodness, rich in mercy and abounding in love. You are faithful to your people in every generation and your word endures forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the fellowship of saints and the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, merciful Father, not as we ought, but as we are able. Because in your tender love, you gave the world your only Son, in order that the world might be saved through him. He made you known by, the taking, by taking the form of a servant, healing the sick, liberating the oppressed, reaching out to the lost, betrayed, reviled, and nailed to the cross, he confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. <clears throat> On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, <clears throat> drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. In obedience to him and with grateful hearts, we approach your holy table, remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory, confident in his sovereign purpose, we declare our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ Come again. <clears throat> Send your Holy Spirit on us that as we receive this bread and this cup, we may partake in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May we be renewed in his risen life, filled with love and strengthened in our will to serve others and make our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice, acceptable to you, knitting us together as one in your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom, with you, and the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Look, the 
body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, may the bread of heaven given for you. Amen. The body of Christ, Joseph, given for you. Paul, the body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Please stand. Let us pray, saying, We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from God, Creator, Son, and Spirit, go with you. Amen. Sending him is him 500. That beautiful hymn just said, go into the world and proclaim the gospels. If necessary, use words. <laughs> 